Hello everyone, I'm Don Jarman and today we're going to talk about two methods of chronomid fishing. One will be fishing with an indicator and the other will be uh, deep lining uh, when the fish are down uh, deeper. So what I'm going to do is show you the two setups and we'll start off, I'll show you the indicator setup first and then we'll, uh, <coughs> right after that, we'll bring out the deep line and show you how to set up the deep line. So what I've found is if you're fishing in the top 25 feet of water, I'll say the uh, fishing with the indicator works really, really well because it's just easier to cast and you can manage that much line. And I kind of feel when the fish are, let's say, 20 feet down to 50, 60, 70 feet, uh, that's where the deep line comes in. So I'm going to show you the, the both methods of doing that. So let's start with the indicator line for the setup. So the first thing is the type of line. Uh, there's two different uh, lines that I really like to use. I've, I have the uh, real indicator line. And what's good about this is it's a weight forward line. Most of the weight is in the forward portion of the head. So when you're casting indicators and, and weighted <coughs> flies, uh, this uh, helps to send it out much better than just uh, an ordinary dry line. The other super excellent line is the Scientific Angler's Amplitude and Adro. And this has, again, the weight forward in the head. And this particular line is one and a half times heavier than a regular weight forward line. And that's why it works so well indicator fishing when you're throwing, again, the indicator and that much line. So both the Anadro or the Perception are both excellent lines to use. <coughs> now I'm just going to show you quickly the setup. Uh, we have the fly line, either whichever one you choose. This happens to be the real indicator. And what I do, not necessary, but I add a 20-pound short piece, three or four-inch piece on there, and that's so that my smaller 12-pound leader line doesn't cut through uh, <coughs> the fly line. You can do that or not. So I have a short piece of 20-pound, and then I add on my leader line. Now, it depends what time of year you're fishing. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're fishing early spring and late fall, you're going to be fishing with a short, shorter leader length. And in the summer, when the fish are down, or late May on, you'll be fishing with a much longer leader length. So this one here is the short one that I have on here, because I was fishing the fall. So this one here happens to be 10 feet of 12 pound floral line, floral leader. So 10 feet, and to that I attach a swivel, and on the swivel, I attach three feet of six or eight pound uh, floral tippet, okay? And then to my green chronomid. Uh, on the leader line, I call it the float line, okay? Leader float line. That's where you have the float, the indicator. Um, you can pin that anywhere up the line to the depth the fish are. Now, I like to put my pin in the bottom instead of on the top, and I do that for two reasons. Number one, if a fish ever breaks the, if a fish breaks the line off, uh, the fly off, if a fish breaks the fly off, there's nothing to stop the indicator from going out into the lake, okay? If, if the pin is on the top. It just slides down, it goes over the swivel, and out into the lake. The other thing I kind of don't like is when you do get a fish, the indicator, if the pin is on the top, the indicator slides down and ends up on the fish's nose. And I just think that is terrifies the fish. So anyway, pin on the bottom, it can't go by the uh, swivel, and if you snap off, you still retain everything. Um, this is the short line as I said, that I've put on here. I have the short line on the fly line. Now, once the fish go down, and they're in the 18, 20 foot depth, 
I take that off, I coil it up, and I put it on a pipe insulation uh, foamy, and I change over to the long one. This has got the 20-foot leader on here that's all wrapped up and ready to go with the indicator. I'll change over and I will put that on. And again, that goes 20 feet and goes down to the swivel. And, uh, and then you tip it, same thing, three foot tip it and down to the fly. The other little thing I would like to show you is a bobber stopper. We might have to stop that. Okay. The other thing I'd like to show you is a bobber stopper. And they're Danielson. You can get them uh, in a package from Danielson. And they're, um, they're actually called a slip set bobber stopper. And when I find the location of my fish by using the forceps, the bottom, I'm talking about the bottom, using either the forceps or a lead weight, and then I come up one or two feet, whatever I decide. I slide the bobber stopper. I'll just wet that. And I move the bobber stopper to that depth once I've come up the foot. And then after I catch a fish and I'm ready to go again, I don't have to recount it. I don't have to go 5, 10, 15, 16, 17 feet. I just slide the indicator to just below the bobber stopper, plug it in, cast it out and I'm back fishing in, in no time at all. So there is there is a beauty to the bobber stopper and I, I really like them. Uh, I think that's probably about it. I've, I've gone through the setup. You've got your long line, your short line for the different seasons early or into the summer and the rest is just pick the right fly, go to your favorite lake and go fishing. What I'd like to do now, unless there's any questions, I'd like to move on to the deep line. So I'll put all that down. That's the, that's the chronomid setup. That's the indicator setup. So now we've got the deep line. So I'll pull this out. And the deep line I really, really like. Now, I, I would say anything from, it doesn't matter whether it's 15, 18, 19, 20 feet down to 70 feet. And the reason I say 60, 70 feet is I fish Sheridan Lake and lots of times I'm fishing 40 to 70 feet. So the indicator just does not work there. So when I'm out on Sheridan Lake in particular, I will have two deep lines out, one out on each side of the boat, and it works really well. Now, on this particular rod, I have a heavy sink tip. So you can go with two different ways of doing it. You can use a good heavy sink tip. This is a uh, six, this is a six weight, six sink tip. You can also go to the full sink with the 7 Express or the 6 or 7 full sink line. Works excellent and down it goes. Or like I said, a, a heavy sink tip. Um, on top of that, you're, you're on top of the end of your, uh, your sink tip here, I've done the same thing. Now because I fish Sheridan Lake uh, with a really clear water, it's ultra clear water, Anybody trolling needs to put out 100 feet of clear line, the fish are that spooky. So myself, I add four feet, I do four feet of uh, 12 pound fluoro uh, off the end of the fly line. As you can see right there, I got four feet. The same thing, I go to a swivel and I put three feet of tippet on there. The beauty of the swivel on both the indicator line or this is after you've fished and you keep changing flies, your tippet gets shorter and shorter and you could just add more tippet 
on the end of the swivel without affecting the other line. So the tippet's important. So that puts me down, and now I know I'm at least the three and the four. I'm at least seven, and I could be eight feet above the fish. So I, I'm not uh, spooking the fish. Um, the other thing I really like to do and, and would like you to do is before you put on the swivel, okay, I've just cut the swivel off. I'm d down to my first four feet that I've just added on. You take one of these line indicators and we'll put that through there and again, you can buy, you can make them. This is my own that I've made. I have a few. Or you can buy this Danielson again and you usually get three or four to a pack and they're pre-made for you. So either way. Now, what I'm going to do, this, this will be on the fly line. <coughs> so this will slide through and that's why you have to take the swivel off. And now I'm on the fly line. So I will slide this down and to start with, it doesn't matter. As long as it's on the fly line, I can go down 10 or 20 feet while I'm at home. Then you slide it off, you get rid of the tube, that stays at home with you. <coughs> and all I do is I snug that up. You don't make it super tight because it has to slide, but I snug it up and there it is. And I will clip off the extras on this. Okay, so, that I, so I just have a short tag on each side. And now what I do is I slide that all the way down and let's say I'm fishing 30 feet deep. Uh, I will just pull out my line and slide this down to approximate, you know, just over 30 feet. <coughs> then I will put my swivel back on, tie my swivel back on the tippet and the fly, and put the forceps or the weight onto the fly, and I will send it down to the bottom until I hit bottom. The same thing, I will bring it up that foot or two feet, and when I do that, I will bring out all the extra line that I can, moving this down, and I will put this right in front, front of the fly reel. So when I'm one or two feet up off the bottom, then I will put this right in front of me, right in front of the reel, right in front of the reel, sorry, in front of the reel, and I will tighten it there, and then it's, there's my depth marker. I know I'm off the bottom and I don't have to keep marking it <coughs> with the forceps. So when I catch the fish, release it, I can cast my line out and go back until this shows in front of my reel. I know I'm at the same depth. The one little, <coughs> excuse me, the one little secret to the deep line is when you cast it back out the first time, the second, the tenth time, don't just pile it out in front of you. I made that mistake my very first time at Sheridan and I couldn't figure out why after 30 minutes I was not getting a bite. When I pulled it up to change the fly, I realized that my heavy line had gone down and, and mingled in with the fly and the leader and it was just a ball. It was just a mess down there. So what you need to do <coughs> is when you're ready to cast out, cast out about 20 feet. Just have the line in the boat, make the cast, get it about 20 feet or so away from the boat, and then whatever else <coughs> you need to get to the, attain the depth, just pile it. Just take it off and pile it out beside the boat. And as it sinks down, it draws that in and everything stays separated. Okay, and then you're down there fishing. So just one little tip is to make sure you get that away from the boat. Other than that, it's just uh, a great way to fish. There's lots of times I will do one indicator line, and if it's a little bit deeper, <coughs> excuse me, I'll throw out a deep line so I have it hanging out the other side of the boat. 
And when it goes, it's usually a very forceful takedown. Like, you know, your your heart just goes, especially on any lake, but Sheridan Lake, they got nice Penask fish in there. And I don't know how they come from 50 feet to coming out of the surface of the water in like three seconds, but they do. And they're usually behind you or beside, but it's a very exciting way to fish. And uh, so either you fish two indicators if it's 24, five feet or less, or you can do an indicator and a deep line. So I'd like to finish up there. I, I hope I've given you enough information to get you started. So both the indicator or the deep line and just get out there and there's your setup and enjoy fishing. So thanks a lot and we'll see you on the lake.